Welcome back to the Gopher Pregame Show. Thanks for staying with us here on the Gopher Pregame Show. Joined now by a member of the offensive line. He's your starting center for your Minnesota Gophers, Nathan Bow, with us now. Nathan, thanks for joining us here on the show. Yeah. Appreciate you taking the time. Thanks for having me. Final game of the regular season. You know, I, I feel like I don't have to say too much when it's Wisconsin and Wisconsin is in town, but this is a game you guys look forward to, the fans look forward to every single year. What are you looking forward to the most about Saturday's game? Oh, uh, you know, just another opportunity to be out there with my brothers and, uh, you know, just another opportunity to play the greatest, greatest sport in the world. And it's one of the best rivalries in college football. The Axe is on the line. You guys have had the best of Wisconsin over the last couple of years. So what is it like playing against them? You're used to playing against them. So what kind of style are you anticipating and what's it going to take to keep that Axe in Minnesota? Yeah, you know, I mean, it, you know, we, we always have to focus on the present. And, you know, they have a brand new coaching staff and they're doing a great job there. And, you know, they're another, you know, physical Big Ten West team. And we know it's going to be, it's, it's rivalry week, the best rivalry in the country. And we know it's going to be a physical game. And just like always, it's going to start and end in the trenches. Now, the axe isn't the only thing on the line for you guys. If you win, you become bowl eligible and have a chance to represent the school in a bowl game. If you lose, the season comes to an end. So how much really is at stake? for you guys when you take on Wisconsin? Yeah, you know, we, we, we love playing football so much. And so obviously, you know, winning allows us to continue our season and it allows me to continue the season with, you know, my best friends out there playing the great sport. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what's on the line. But, you know, we have to look at, you know, we have to have that microscope perspective too. We just have to focus on being 1-0 in the Wisconsin week. How extra important is that? I know since it's the last game, it's always important for the seniors, and you always want to send the seniors off in style as best you can. Is that the extra motivation you think that you might need on Saturday? Yeah, you know, there's a, a really fun group of seniors this year, and, you know, it's, it's, it's a group of, you know, seventh year, sixth year, fifth year, fourth year seniors. It's a really, uh, you know, special time in college football. You have so many different levels of seniors. Um, but yeah, senior day has always been something I've looked forward to. You know, since my this is my sixth year, so I've seen five senior days, and um, it's been it's been a special and emotional day every every year. When the season began, I think there were some questions circulating around in media circles, wondering about the state of the offensive line for this team. But you guys, as a group, have really molded into one of the better units you know that we've seen around the country. What has it been like playing with these guys, and how well do you feel like you guys have kind of fused together as a group? Yeah, you know, I think this is a you know second year in a row where there's a big question mark put on our um, on the offensive line here at the University of Minnesota. And, you know, do you we have... need to stop doing that? We need to stop doing that in the media. Yeah. I guess. Do we need to stop <laughs> second guessing the offensive line. Yeah, you know, we've really just embraced it, and you know, we really focus on the internal voice within our program. And Coach Callahan does a great job of you know putting us in great situations to go out there and execute and play fast and. Uh, it's just been the expectation built here. You know, all the guys that have been here before me, you know, I'm still in contact with today. You know, I got a chance to talk to Jared Weiler before the Ohio State game last week. And, you know, he was he was my mentor. Um, he was the sixth, you know, fifth year when I was a freshman. And, uh, you know, it started with him. And there's just a great tradition of, you know, running the ball here, having great offensive lines, playing connected, being each other's best friends. And that's something I've been, you know, proud to, you know, um, start again this year. Yeah, and it's, it's no secret that you guys are a, a run-first oriented team. I've, I've gotten a chance to talk to Ariante and Quinn. They both say, yeah, offensive linemen, we love to move forward. We love to run the ball. You guys have had multiple different running backs either win Big Ten Freshman of the Year or Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year. How much pride do you take in that, knowing that you guys have just accomplished so much in the run game this year? A lot. You know, I mean, my whole life I've played offensive line, and I've really never cared too much about individual stats, but I've really cared about how our running backs do and our wide receivers and our quarterbacks. And uh, it, we're just we're super proud of whoever's back there. The expectation is that they, they become the best version of themselves. Now, it's going to be very important again this week to run it effectively actively control the clock, keep Wisconsin off the field. What is the secret, in your opinion, to running the ball effectively like you guys have? Uh, you know, it's just playing fast and playing confident, and confidence comes from preparation. So, you know, we just had a great practice today, and, you know, we've had a series of great weeks, weeks of practice, and it's going to pay off, and we just have to continue to practice well together and play together, and all that camaraderie we built over the year, uh, it's really paid off this year. What is the mood like with this team now, even though it's been a rough couple of weeks, but what is the mood like with this team going into the Wisconsin game? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think just with this team overall, and I think coaches alluded to it too, 
Uh, no matter what the outcome is of the game, we always come to, to work on Sundays and the Tuesday practice too. I mean, we just, this team works so freaking hard and we have for the whole year. And when it, when it comes to, you know, winter conditioning, spring ball, summer conditioning, fall training camp and practices, you know, we, we just practice so hard. And I think that's one thing that really uh, sticks out about this group. You practice hard, you work hard. So how much would you like to see the team rewarded this weekend for all that hard work it just how much does it really mean to the team to get a win against Wisconsin oh it, you know it, it means it means a ton and you know it means a little extra when it's rivalry week and last game of the season but you know when it comes down to it you have to put all those external factors aside and just focus on doing your job and going one and all every play for yourself personally I know you know John Michael Schmitz was an, an all-american during his time here you got a chance to watch and study and see how he did. But for yourself personally, as the starter this year, how do you feel you've grown as a player this year? Yeah, you know, it's been my first opportunity to be a full-time uh, starter at center this year. And, you know, John Michael's been a huge um, mentor for me over the years and obviously one of my best friends. Um, so he, we still check in almost every week and talk about how life's going and uh, how our families are doing and how football's going. But, um, no, I've, I've been really proud of myself and, um, you know, just super, super thankful to my coaches and my teammates to allow me to be in this position and go out there and play every day with a smile on my face with my friends. Our thanks to Nathan Bowe. And as you heard in that piece there, you know, John Michael Schmitz was Mr. Everything on the offensive line here the last couple of years. Really some big shoes to fill on this offensive line. Nathan Bowe has filled them pretty well. He has, and it's a perfect role for him this year. He's played literally every position on the offensive line in his six years. He's played with about 100 offensive linemen. When they beat Iowa, and you know, PJ's talked about all the different phone calls people were making, uh, Nathan Bowe had the most calls to make because he played with the most people, and he has the most people mad at him that he forgot to call him <laughs> or shout him out. But it's a great college football story, Nathan Bowe. It's a great Minnesota story, Nathan Bowe, coming here, staying home, lives in Lakeville, which has seceded from Minnesota somehow and sends everybody to Wisconsin. <laughs> the Bowe family stays true. Nathan says, I want as many Lakeville kids to come to Minnesota as they can, and he's shown you can have a great experience. So big one today for Lakeville. It's not just for the Axe, it's for Lakeville and it's for Nathan Bowe. Just this, the thought of Lakeville actually trying to secede out of the state. I think has, they've pretty much done it. Has me, has me in Between in Nebraska stitches. and Wisconsin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, but the offensive line, starts, like well, I joke with him, or the, that was the question going into the year. What about this offensive line? Well, I mean, they answered the question, and they answered it pretty quickly. Yeah, and when you have a guy like J.G. said, when you've learned from so many different offensive linemen, when you've played every position on the line just about, it helps you. I talked to Kyle Rudolph about that because we were talking about coverage versus, like, blocking versus routes. And as a tight end, Kyle Rudolph was saying how he knows everything that everybody's supposed to do. I imagine Nathan Bowe has that same mindset, yeah. playing tackle, playing guard. He's like, okay, well, if I point this mic out, I do understand what this guard's thinking. Let me change it to this mic and let me help Ethan out. So Oh, and then when you have John Michael Schmidt that you can reach out to in text and say, hey, when we see this, what do we, what should I do? I think that's been a huge help, too. When you have a guy that's been a, like a staple, and that's why it's so crazy when we think about all these six- and seven-year guys leaving, is what it's going to look like once they're gone. Because to get that experience, you don't just grow that on a tree. You have to find a way to grow it within your program. And some programs like Alabama, Ohio State, Michigan, they just have them. And like PJ says, they have to grow it within this program, Not no, you know, no pun intended. And the guys bring up a great point for all you kids watching at home. Don't ever say to yourself, well, that's not my job. Well, learn other people's jobs, and you'll have a better understanding of what goes on. Perfect example with Nathan Bowe. Yeah, okay, fine, it's a little bit of a stretch. Whatever, but I get it. You get what I mean. Coming up next.